Australian citizens evacuated from Lebanon expressed relief upon arriving safely in Cyprus on Saturday. After arriving in Lebanon end of July, Ferris planned to leave the country on October 2, but like many, her flight got cancelled. We had no other option, she said. Speaking on the Israeli strikes, she said that, houses, shops, schools, everywhere around there was being hit, and that she could hear the rockets from her house. Mahmoud Gabara, Australian who was in northern Lebanon, described the escalating situation in the country as unbelievable and risky. I've seen a lot and it's time to leave and get back to Australia, added Gabara. Fayez Dindakli, Australian from Sydney who was in Tripoli for vacation, was grateful for the Australian government's efforts in evacuating its citizens. He urged for additional assistance to help Australians who remain stranded in Lebanon. Afif Ruhail, Australian retiree who was in northern Lebanon, also thanked the Australian government for the evacuation into Cyprus. However, he also demanded that Western countries wake up and confront the devastating situation in Lebanon. It's on your shoulders to do the right thing, he added. South Korea, Netherlands, Germany among other countries have raced to evacuate their citizens from Lebanon as relentless Israeli strikes continue to pound the country and most commercial flights remain halted. I mean, it wasn't that close, but you could literally see. Basically, you hear the rockets falling, but your hand is on your heart because you have absolutely no idea where they're going to fall. Do you know what I mean? That was the scariest thing. I mean, nothing was, they say it was decisive, you know. No, houses, shops, schools, everywhere around there was being hit. So regardless. I arrived on the 31st of July, so I was meant to leave um, 2nd of October, but then Etihad cancelled the flight, so we had no other option. So this thing in there, it's unbelievable. It's a bit risky, and I've uh, been in Australia for 50 years, so I've been there for three months. I've seen a lot, and uh, it's time to leave and get back to Australia. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, if you are in Australia, stay in Australia. People in, Le in Lebanon better get out as soon as possible. For every Australian citizen, the must get out from Lebanon now. They're everyone in, the, in, this, in dangerous sport now. Thanks for the Australian government. Thanks for everyone help us to get out from Lebanon. But from here, um, I send my voice to everyone can help these um, Australian people in Lebanon to get out, please do it. Uh, I, I hope you have to wake up, Europeans, because you can do it. Uh, I mean, the Westerns, it's on your shoulders, okay, to, to do the right thing and no one else, because the others, they are weak, because they have, the, the European nations or Western nations, they have devastating means of killing. They have all means, biological, chemical, uh, you know, uh, TNT, it's an old story. Uh, so we have to wake up. A plane carrying 40 tons of medical aid arrived in Beirut on Friday as Israel widened its ground operation against Hezbollah militant group in Lebanon. 
The World Health Organization and the UN Refugee Agency are providing the aid that were donated by the United Arab Emirates to the Lebanese government, which will distribute it to the hospitals that are receiving the wounded. Lebanese caretaker health minister Dr. Faras Abayad was at the airport to receive the supplies. It contains 40 tons of medical supplies, mainly trauma kits that will be crucial to support the hospitals as they receive the casualties from the Israeli attacks on Lebanon, he said on Tuesday, Israel began a ground incursion into Lebanon against the Hezbollah militant group. Israel and Hezbollah have traded fire across the Lebanon border almost daily since the day after Hamas cross-border attack on October 7, 2023, which killed 1,200 Israelis and took 250 others hostage. We are here at the airport today. We are receiving uh, the first shipment out of many. This is a shipment that has been organized by the WHO and UNHCR and supported by uh, the United Arab Emirates. It contains 40 tons of medical supplies, mainly trauma kits, that will be crucial to support the hospitals as they receive the uh, casualties from the Israeli attacks on Lebanon. It's extremely important that we're receiving uh, a first batch of uh, urgently needed medical supply. Uh, these are trauma kits uh, and again it's, uh, it's uh, important that we are able to ramp this up further to help Lebanon, the Lebanese and other population groups at this time of crisis. At this time of crisis. We as the UN, our role is to help the Minister of Health as well as the hospitals to give them the tools that they need to save lives. And our, you know, at the end of the day, we would like to impact, we would like to make an impact uh, to the people uh, who are impacted for the crisis and make sure that at least people who are coming to the hospitals, they need the, 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 the services that they need at the hospital. As you know, more and more hospitals now are reaching to the uh, you know, uh, overwhelmed actually, I have to say, because of the increased number of injuries.